I was in high school and there was the girl that everybody wanted, you know. She's dating the high school quarterback. With a look, she could make you feel as worthless as anything. And you're intimidated. You know what that's like, being an adolescent. And, and here's this supposedly popular and pretty girl and her approval and all of that. And no matter what, you always felt inferior. Same thing goes with young girls toward a handsome man. But I was saved. My mother bought me the ugliest shirt that anyone has ever worn to school. It was a Western shirt. It didn't even have buttons. It had snaps. This is a form of child abuse. Unknown in the annals of child abuse. And it hung in my closet like an ominous boogeyman. And I would rather have been burned alive than to put that on. But the night before, on a Sunday night at, six, at 9 p.m., I had met Christ. I was born again. And when I felt the presence of God pulling me, I began to cry out. And I couldn't, the cry that I could never put into words. That orphan feeling, that inferiority feeling, all gone. I need you. And Jesus heard my cry. I'm transformed. And the next morning, I couldn't believe it. Where is that shirt? I got to wear that shirt because I'm going to get to share what God did for me with everybody that insults me today. And I'm putting it on in front of a mirror. It was like a badge of honor. I, I thought it was the handsomest military uniform you could ever wear. I felt so secure. Her name was Debbie. I never forget it. She was in my first period class. I walk in with that shirt. And I looked at her and she went, ew. And it bounced off. It didn't matter. It didn't care. Your beauty doesn't matter. My feelings don't matter. I have met the Son of God. I have been put into the family of God. What happens when you're alone? Are you paralyzed by the need to impress? Are you in the entertainment world where one day you're valuable and the next day you're nothing? What is the greatest gift in life? Is it the gift of being the most famous person in the world or being a person in the world that doesn't care what anybody but God thinks of them? Tell me what's better. In a moment, I'm going to have you close your eyes. And don't you dare blame anyone. If you turn down this offer, I'm going to give you. If you turn down this moment that I'm going to offer you, you can no longer blame your parents or life or adversity or your friends or your enemies. You can no longer do it because you've become the author and finisher of your own tragedy. You are the villain of your own life because Jesus is saying, follow me. Follow me. And you'll walk out of that prison. The prison doors will open in front of you. The first step toward Christ. The power of the love of God will overwhelm you. And you'll know that you are somebody. Close your eyes. It's dangerous. This is a dangerous moment. This is a dangerous moment. You could so easily do the worst thing you've ever done right now. 
This is a gift that you do not turn down. This is not something you need to go home and think about. I'm going to ask everyone who's moving to hold steady. I just think it would be a tragic mistake for any believer to be walking out of a tent while a lost soul is trying to walk to the front. So please hold your motion. If you are here and you'll say, Mario, pray for me that I will no longer be lonely, depressed, feel inferior, or the spirit of this age will ever be what I'm trying to impress. I want to know Christ in a real form. I've tried religion. I've gone to church. But I've not ever been set free of the sadness, the brokenheartedness of my life. And I want to be set free tonight. I want to know what it means to have hope. I want to know what it means to have peace in the storm. I want to know what it feels like. To know that God has my future in his hands. And I'm willing to admit that I've sinned. And I'm turning from it. And I'm going to receive what God wants for me. Mario, pray for me that God will remove my broken heart. That God will give me a new life. That God will cleanse me. And I will know God's love is real put your hand up right now if that's you put your hand up right now if that's you you may think what if I'm the only one with a hand in the air you're not there's a forest of hands there's not a section without a hand raised and yours is still down still extending the pain still choosing out of fear and I don't know I'm not going to judge you I don't know why but I know that God told you to put your hand in the air and you didn't do it so do it now and watch what happens you've trusted in so many things that failed you why would you turn down the one person that you fully can trust for a new life raise your hand right now put your hand in the air Everyone with your hand raised, stand up right now. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet wherever you are. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I want you to look at me, all of you that are standing. I want you to find the aisle that's closest to you. Get in that aisle. Walk up here to the front. Get ready for forgiveness. Get ready for joy and gladness. Get ready for a new life. Come from here. Come from there. Come. Come. All the way outside the tent, wherever you are. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Fill this side. Come in the name of Jesus. Come for the power of Christ. Body of Christ, I think you ought to celebrate what you're seeing right now. This is it. Come. Come.